The Battle of Cobley Skill was an American Revolutionary War raid on the frontier settlement of Cobley Skill, New York on May 30, 1778. The battle, having taken place in the modern-day village of Warnerville, NY near Cobley Skill Richmondville High School, marked the beginning of a phase in which Loyalists and Iroquois, encouraged and supplied by British authorities in the province of Quebec, raided and destroyed numerous villages on what was then the United States' western frontier of New York and Pennsylvania. A small party of Iroquois entered Cobley Skill and drew the local defenders into a trap set by a much larger party of Iroquois and loyalists under the command of Joseph Brandt. After killing a number of the militia and driving off the remainder, Brandt's forces destroyed much of the settlement. New York's defenders retaliated against Brandt's actions against Cobley Skill and other communities by destroying Iroquois villages later in the year, and Continental Army forces destroyed more Iroquois villages in the Sullivan Expedition of 1779. Background with the failure of British General John Burgoyne's campaign to the Hudson after the battles of Saratoga in October 1777, the American Revolutionary War in upstate New York became a frontier war. British leaders in the province of Quebec supported Loyalist and Native American partisan fighters with supplies and armaments. During the winter of 1777-78 Brandt and other British allied Indians developed plans to attack frontier settlements in New York and Pennsylvania. In February 1778 Brandt established a base of operations at Onequaga. He recruited a mix of Iroquois and loyalists estimated to number between two and three hundred by the time he began his campaign in May. In 1778 the settlement of Cobley Skill, New York consisted of 20 families living on farms spread out along Cobley Skill Creek. It was part of the Schoharie Creek area which was a significant source of food for the Patriot War effort. Its principal defense was the small local militia under Captain Christian Brown. When attacks by the Iroquois were rumored to be coming in the spring of 1778, the militia appealed for additional defenses. Continental Army Colonel Ishabod Walden sent a company of 30 to 40 men from his 7th Massachusetts Regiment under Captain William Patrick to reinforce the militia. Battle. On the morning of May 30, Brandt laid a trap for Cobleskill's defenders. He sent forward a small number of natives as a lure. Captain Patrick's force and the local militia spotted them near the southern edge of the settlement. Despite Captain Brown's warning that the Indians might be setting a trap, Patrick pressed forward as the natives withdrew, engaging them in a running battle. After about one mile Brandt sprung his trap, and Patrick's company was engulfed by Brandt's larger force. Both Patrick and his second-in-command were killed in the battle, as was about half of their force. Brown organized the remaining forces into a fighting retreat back into the settlement. Five men took refuge in the house of George Warner which the attackers set on fire, killing all five men. A total of 22 settlers were killed, eight were wounded, and five captured by Brandt's men, while Brandt's force suffered an estimated 25 casualties. Aftermath Brandt and his men burned ten houses and associated outbuildings before withdrawing, killing any cattle they could not take. Brandt took five, seven, prisoners, which the Indians prepared to burn at the stake as retribution for a previous group of captives effecting an escape from the Indians, killing several Indians to do so. This group of seven prisoners were made to gather wood for their own funeral prior and the fire was actually lit, before one of the captives, L.T. Maynard, a Freemason, gave the Mason signal of distress. Chief Brandt noticed this, and stopped the execution. All of the seven captives were then made to march 40 days, first to Montreal, then to Quebec, obtaining only the sustenance they were able to gather while on the forced march. On the journey the Indians forced these seven captives to repeatedly run the gauntlet, and forced him at times to keep their fingertips pushed into hot glowing pipe bowls for the Indians' amusement. They were never given the choice of their future or lives by the Indians, or Chief Brandt at any time. The account of L.T. 
Maynard is related in 1,000 famous Freemasons, along with stories of an additional five Masons, other revolutionary patriots, who were likewise saved by Brandt. The group's capture and journey is chronicled in Forests and Clearings by B.F. Herbert, Montreal, 1874 pp. 62-63-64. Brandt continued to build his forces and raid frontier communities in the Mohawk Valley. He considered following up the attack on Cobley Skill with one on Cherry Valley, but because the militia was on high alert, he instead withdrew back to Iroquois territory. Cherry Valley was the scene of a massacre the following November by forces led in part by Brandt. New York Governor George Clinton, who had been considering operations against Onequaga, enlarged those plans after the raid on Cobley Skill and Brandt's attack on German flats in September. In October 1778 Continental and militia forces destroyed Onequaga and Unadilla, another Indian village that supported Brandt and Butler. The settlers of Cobley Skill who were rendered destitute by the action received £200 in compensation for their troubles. Settlers from many area communities began withdrawing to larger, better fortified communities like Cherry Valley and Schenectady. This action and later ones by Brandt and Butler contributed to the decision by the Continental Congress to authorize a major Continental Army expedition into Iroquois territory. Commanded by Generals John Sullivan and James Clinton, the 1779 expedition systematically destroyed the villages of Iroquois tribes fighting for the British but did little to stop the frontier war.